Xavi will be leaving Barcelona at the end of the season and I'm starting to realize that that might be a mistake. So in this video we're going to discuss all that. But before we get into it, please do subscribe to the channel. It's going to help us a lot to get the family to grow. And I want to thank you guys so much for 3000 subscribers. You know, it's been a long journey for me. And thank you for sticking with the channel. And I also want to apologize for not uploading recently. I'm still sorting out my monetization stuff. So thank you very much for sticking with the channel. It's much appreciated. So let's get right into the video and see why it might be a mistake to let him go. You know, there's really two things that made me realize why it would be a mistake to let Xavi go. Number one, his adaptability. The second reason is the fact that he's putting a team in place. We've, we as Barca fans, we always want to have the best team, right? But if you think about it, this season is not turning out so bad. We are in the quarterfinals of the Champions League and we're second in La Liga. What is so terrible about that? But the reason why I'm saying Xavi should not leave at the end of the season is the way that this guy is putting the team together. And I want to start with Ter Stegen here, right? He, over the last three or four games, he's really maximized the ability of Ter Stegen, right? Especially in the build-up phase. You know, if you go and watch the previous uh, analysis of Atletico Madrid and Barcelona, you see how he's connecting Lewandowski with Ter Stegen. And this is causing teams real problems especially teams who press high because you're gonna have guys who's going to run ahead of Lewandowski now and now immediately you can see now you have a five on four so the maximization of the players is really one reason why I think Xavi shouldn't leave at the end of the season and to Stegen's ability is really crazy right you can see Sergio Roberto or whoever can run into that space and then link up and now Barcelona is in better better positions and a lot of you guys say we're kicking too much long balls I saw in the comment section of the previous video but nowadays the kicking is really good you know Ter Stegen can land these kicks you know especially to the likes of Rafinha as well he can now maximize he's maximizing Ter Stegen the only thing that I really want him to do with the Stegen really is sweep a keeper because Barcelona likes to play with an extremely high line we all know that right our line is really high you know so I would like to see Barcelona play uh, with this high line actually Ter Stegen doing some sweeping here in behind so that is what I've really seen improving from Ter Stegen he kicks long and it automatically places Barcelona in better positions to attack the ball. In the defense, I think we, we can all agree really that, that the biggest upgrade here is Pau Kubarsi, right? Along with Joao Cancelo, of course, but Cancelo is already a bona fide uh, player like a defender, you know? Um, I don't, at this point really, you know, when I saw Kubarsi, like I said in the previous video, I really struggled to see how these two are improved or how these two are doing or what their job or what their role in the team is right but at the same time i think kunde and araujo are really good defensive defenders like good defensively and then you have pau kubarsi and joao cancelo actually uh bringing the balance who is more like uh kubarsi of course the penetrating passes and cancelo of course the traditional fullback and to be honest with you, I really struggle to see how Balde will be fitting into this team. So obviously we know that Pau Kubarsi, this guy is really excellent at penetrating passes, right? You can get him everywhere. And his accuracy is just insane for his, like, his age. That is absolutely insane to me. And I think the improvement really does is also coming from him not only from chris christensen in the midfield bringing that balance but he's also bringing that balance you know because these guys are only good at defending really you don't really see them giving penetrating passes or having being that impactful with the ball then there's kubarsi who's actually only that you know and also with joao cancelo he's really bringing that balance for me you know sometimes we only see that Lamine and Rafinha the, the attacks is only coming from that right side but Cancelo is bringing it from the left side and who can complain about Drao Cancelo I mean seriously seriously so I think Kubarsi has really brought a nice like balance within the team and who has put that into place who is the one that actually had the guts to play Kubarsi who has the faith in this child to be able to play in that position and that's Xavi that is Xavi. That's only Xavi. And we're going to talk about Christensen and the midfield in a second. But in the defense, real balance, real good balance from, from, from Barcelona. And that's all due to Xavi. I honestly think after Kubarsi, 
or the work Xavi has done with Kubarsi. I think the second reason why I believe he should stay at Barca is the work he has done with Christensen. And I've started to realize that Christensen is really enabling the likes of Frankie de Jong to operate like they normally do, which is that type of box-to-box midfielder type stuff, right? So if you're going to have a pivot and you're going to have Frankie, for example, over here, then the likes of Gundogan and Pedri and Fermin is going to shine, right? So it's all about balance. And we, of course, know how Xavi likes to have control in the build-up. And it's crazy that Christensen has more control over the ball in the build-up phase than somebody like Romayu would have, which is absolutely crazy to me. And here's the deal. If you're going to have everything in place, the people will automatically shine. For example, like I said with Frankie de Jong. Frankie de Jong is, is, is a type of box-to-box midfielder, right? That's why he and Busquets were so, so good together. So that's going to allow, Christensen is now allowing Frankie to go forward. And what can we say about Gundogan and the runs that Fermin has been making? So it's all about balance. And I think Xavi understands that. It's not really about having players in a 4-3-3. I can now understand it's about balance. And we just talked about the the, 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 the defense, you know. So the, the, the defense is, is, is really nicely balanced. So that is what Xavi has brought to this midfield. So like I said, from the midfield, Xavi didn't really have much to do. He had to bring balance and just simply by moving Christensen, they brought a little bit of balance to the team and actually unlocked Frankie de Jong and created that number 10 role for Barca, which is real scarce and we of course know. Now with the with the with the attack, I think it's gonna be a with the attack is gonna be a little bit more difficult to benefit this from this. Because I've seen there's a lot of uh, playing with Lewandowski that we mentioned in the previous in the earlier in the video. But we also now see starting to see the likes of Joao Felix coming as like a second number 10. So this midfield is not so static anymore. You know, so that is really a good thing for Barcelona. And we of course know that the, the attacks mainly come from comes from Lamine and now I'm seeing Rafinha as well. And then you have Joao Cancelo coming there. There's still a little bit more to figure out. I think the left winger is the main problem and the main thing that Xavi has to really get in order for this team to be operating full throttle. But yeah, like I said, it's a, a, a whole lot to actually uh, uncover with the with the attack. But I feel like um, there's still a lot more, like I said, to figure out. But I think the biggest thing is the opposite movements that you see. You see the we always now have a, a player that's pushing back the back line of the opponents, and there's people that coming towards the ball a lot more, which was actually missing. You know, uh, a lot of this season we don't see opposite movements, but now we're starting to see it. In conclusion, I just wanted to add that stylistically, I really think Xavi is the guy to take this forward. And I think you guys can agree with the work that he has done with Christensen and Kubarsi now. There's a lot of things that Xavi is trying to find and trying to put together, especially with the balance, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I honestly think that he should stay on because we have, he's the closest thing to Pep Guardiola, to be honest with you. Uh, obviously, the profiles needs to be right. But as always, guys, please do subscribe to the channel. It's going to help us a lot to get the family to grow. Thank you very much for watching. Do let me know your comments down. And uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Goodbye.